We are in Chapter 1, Records Management. We are talking about the information growth. We are in the information age. We don't keep a lot of stuff around anymore. We can't handle keeping stuff around. We don't have enough place to put it. There's way too much information out there for us to manage. Gets generated, generated daily. Newspapers, radio, television. Even though our newspapers are no longer printed every single day and distributed to us, there's still stuff going on every single day. They're online. Internet pages, electronic mail, blogs, phone calls. How many of you organize your email? Out of desperation, I have put rules on my emails to help me out. I have created a folder off to the side that says process, nothing else to do, because that my system automatically deletes in six months, and I want a clean inbox. So instead of waiting for six months and then it just constantly drops a month, I'm moving everything out, and I'm going to eventually have a clean inbox. Phone calls. Who's keeping phone calls? You recording anything? But you get information that way, even on your phones. Organizing information is a challenge. How do you organize it? Three people. What do you do in your life? You do file. Some stuff you file? Okay. Let's hear from one of the gentlemen. I'm gonna. This is because this is a recording. It's gonna go on Blackboard. I'm gonna try not to say names, so I apologize for pointing. You can't do nothing. What'd you do with your high school diploma? <laughs> Mom, great, love it. Yes. So, what do you? How are you organizing your bills? But you're filing them and putting them someplace. Someone in the afternoon class told me they had them in their room. They had everything in their room. Later on, it got a little bit more organized, but it just started off being in their bedroom. Use a whiteboard? Oh, a calendar whiteboard. Love that idea. Uh, we used to get blank ones from Office Max, and then we'd write over each one. And then every year, you have to transfer the information. Electronics more fun than that. Where do you keep it? You said offices? Front door? Drawers? Anybody an admitted piler? I'm an admitted piler. I can find anything in there. Don't you rearrange it, right? Mm -hmm. How long do you keep it? Too long. We get attached, especially women. We get attached to our things, to our papers. On it. Um, Men, you are much better at this than we are. Some women are too, but I'm not. I'm, I get attached. I get in the right mood, though, and it's not good time. And my husband's like, I'll get the trash bag. And he gets the big black kind that fit a lot more stuff in them. Once a month, you do. I am so proud of you. I've been teaching this class for years, and I'm really hoping it's going to rub off. Now, the truth is, every single one of you are organized. We just have different ways of doing it. We already saw that in the in-class activity of starting off somewhere by first name, somewhere by last name, organizing ourselves into an alphabetical list. You are organized. You know where to get to, what time, what you have to do. You know how to figure that out, right? Some of us are writing it down. Some of us are just leaving it all on Blackboard. Some of us are just remembering it. So we all have some form of organization going on. It just may not be something that we're ready to put words to. Records management, the actual management means using resources to achieve specific goals. And that's involving planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. You should hear all this in all your management and supervision classes. Records management itself means we're going to control the records through the life cycle of the record. We create a form. Do we need to keep that form forever? We write down a phone message and we hand it off to somebody. Do we have to keep that forever? How long do we keep that? Life cycle. This is also known as records and information management. RIM is the acronym that's in your textbook. Definition of a record. <laughs> Stored information. Regardless of media or characteristics. Was life easier before all the computer explosion? Absolutely. It was pretty much on paper. But we still have voicemail. Yet you had to deal with. Uh, when the phones came out, or an answering machine. How did you get stuff off of there? People kept the tapes they were working with. Stored information. So 
Uh, regardless, the meteor characteristics has not is not a new challenge, but it certainly has exploded the challenge. So it's a stored piece of information made or received by an organization. And we're looking specifically at organizations, but I will use a lot of examples to your personal life because you can organize your records just as if you were at a company. And then when you go into job interviews and they talk about some or records organization, you can go, well, I do this, 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 this. I did this class. I've got this. Under my files have been organized for three years now uh, ever since I learned that. Things you can talk about. Stored information, made or received. What might be something that's received by an organization? Mail, letters from clients, complaints from clients, bills that the organization has to pay, invoices, a bill again goes along with the bills. Um, what are they making at organizations? There's going to be paperwork on the products they produce or services, transactions they have with customers, invoices <laughs> for the customers, <laughs> same thing. Uh, again, there may be forms that they're having people fill out or even employees, timesheets, all sorts of things. It provides evidence of operation and has continuing value. So it has to be a stored, something, that information we store somehow. It's got to be made or received by the organization and provide evidence of its operations or have continuing value. Is there anything you can think of that doesn't meet those three? No, I can't either. So we're talking tons of minutia, tons of little pieces of information that may go up to bigger pieces of information, all that, deciding which one of those to keep and which to let go. So the question becomes, how do we classify those? By use, a transaction document, a reference document, and these are on page five. I always get these wrong, so we like to um, review the book at this point. Something used in the day-to-day -day operations. E-commerce on the internet, you're talking the invoices, requisitions, purchase and sales orders, bank checks, statements, contracts, shipping documents, personnel records, any employment stuff you do, timesheets, tennis reports. All those are things that the, the company uses, page five. They give reference to what's going on. Do you have anything in your life that you have right now that you could classify by transaction. Bank statements, bills you're paying. Uh, anybody go grocery shopping this weekend? That's a transaction. Okay. By place of use. Oh, sorry, we didn't talk about a reference document. Um, reference document. Information needed to carry on the operation over a long period of time. Uh, their reference for information about previous decisions, quotes on purposes. So the suggestion was made a few minutes ago about companies have products that they're making. We need all that documentation on those products to know why didn't we make this an inch larger? Why did we make it this size? There's a history of discussions. And I'll be honest with you. When long-term employees leave, no one is indispensable. But what you lose when a long-term employee leaves is the history that they have in their brain that we have no clue of where to look. Do we eventually find some things? Yes. But you lose history when a long-term employee leaves. So these reference documents can be very handy. For example, maybe you have to uh, set up a database. Maybe there's a database you use that stores information and you're the person in charge of modifying the design, making updates and changes to it. If you print off the, the design of that database and have a reference document to it, you can always get that back if somebody accidentally does something wrong. 
you just go to that page and say, oh, this table is supposed to have these fields in it and this information, and, and it was set up this, this is that kind of field, this is data, this is text, this is a number, and you've got that reference document. How many of you on the job have a manual that tells you how to do the tasks that your position is responsible for? Standard operating procedures are company operating procedures. I'm thinking specifically more specific to each job. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have one, I would consider building one. Because, again, we're indispensable. We do get sick. Something will happen in our life. Someone else will get sick. It is nice to have that for the next person to come in or a temporary person to come in and be able to read through and find out how to do your job. For example, in office administration, uh, I have a binder full of all sorts of information. If, depending on what day of the week it is, you can look in this spot and find out the things that should be done on that day. Uh, monthly, the things that should be done within that month. First part, end of the month. Categorically, you want to write a check request for something, you can go to a section on check requests and it'll say, you know, do this, it has to be in by this day, if I get these signatures, fill out this form, that kind of stuff. So anybody can sit down and do that job if they have the aptitude for it. That's what I'm talking about. These are reference documents. That's a type of the reference document. So by place of root use, now we're moving on, internal, external. Uh, ex external are the letters, faxes, emails you send out to a customer, client, supplier, government. What's well, something you can think of that happens frequently, routinely, that you send out in a company? Bills to customers always go. Uh, I think about payroll. It gets reported quarterly to the government. And those are external. Internal, again, information needed to operate the organization. Um, it could be communication between... Mm -hmm. between departments. Uh, I was thinking specifically of management sending a memo with a new policy. Up send this, update your policy book, add this policy in. All sorts of things like that. Internal and external. Do you have anything in your life right now that is, that is uh, external? I'm going to kick that. Think of an external example in your life right now. financial st sending me an email um, yeah you're 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 communicating with a supplier how about registering for classes it's not something that you're doing for yourself maybe if you have a savings account and a checking account and you're transferring money from one to the other you could kind of sort of call that internal because it's all for you alone even though you're doing it at an external place That would be a true example of external is moving money from one bank to a different bank. I love it that they've set that up. Uh, maybe you're going to go home, reorganize your files, and move it out of the front door and into an actual filing cabinet. You've made an internal movement. It didn't leave your house. Value to the organization. We have vital records. We have important records, useful records, and non-essential. So look at figure 1.2 on page 7. Vital, absolutely necessary. Your legal part, papers, the papers that say that you um, are set up by the government to be a company. And in the case of just leaving high school, that would be your diploma. That's your legal record saying <laughs> that, that, yes, you are done with that. You uh, now exist beyond that level. <laughs> Important records. They assist in performing the operations. Personnel, sales records, financial, tax records, selected correspondence reports, contracts. You need a high degree of protection necessary in some of this stuff. Anything in your life that you can think of? Important record? What did I hear? Taxes. 
we keep our W2. We keep every pay stub until we get that W2 and that W2 matches up. We keep all our W2s until we get them on the tax form, and then we've kept them as long as the IRS says so, right? Useful records, general correspondence, bank statements. We can go online, do a lot of our banking stuff. Why do we need a paper statement anymore? Because I just don't feel like getting online yet. I don't know. Habit. I'm not ready. I'm ready for so much. There's just only a little thing I'm holding on. Non-essential. They have no predictable value after their initial use. They require the lowest degree of protection. Announcements, bulletins to employees, acknowledgments, routine telephone email messages. What's a routine email you send or receive? Paperwork is due on Friday. Check requests are due at noon on Wednesday. Um, get your timesheets in. We don't need to keep those. You could have a routine request. Anybody do like an inventory count one day a week and send it over to shipping or receiving or accounting or anything like that? I think of something that is uh, non-essential because there will be a history of it. You may keep it for a certain amount of time just to make sure it all gets processed correctly, but you don't have to. So why are records used? They're going to serve as the memory of the business. Business, I can say this. And they document transactions, and they document compliance with laws and regulations. How many of you work with somebody who says, ah, I don't think that's necessary? Do we really have to do that? I hope my husband never hears this video because I tease him on an awful lot. But um, he's a hands-on guy. He likes out and working. In our investment property business, he's out there working. I'm the people person. I'm the paperwork person. He's been learning more of the paperwork and all this stuff and taking it over. And he'll ask me things like, well, do we really have to do that? And I have learned a response that has helped me immensely from being frustrated. We have a standard operating procedure of doing this, this, and this. If you would care to do something like that, just document it that you decided to make a change. Works every time. Are you sure we can't give them two weeks free rent? I'm pretty certain. Do you want any income this month? Anyways, uh, let's do a little activity here. I'll pause the video. Those of you that are watching the video will see that we'll come right back, so you'll miss out on this. What we did in the classroom was we had someone look at this picture for three minutes and see what they could remember from it, and then the rest of the class took five minutes to write down everything they could remember, and we had the first person come in and uh, describe it. We agree that the the test subject A, memory was excellent but not perfect. So our case in point is we can't rely on our memories. We want to have records to actually tell us what happened for the organization. Records values, uh, you work in this in activity 2-1 I think. We have administrative records. There's a figure 1.3 on page 8 shows the types, and things can have more than one value, correct? You learned that as you went through your activity. Records help employees perform the office operations. Legal are ones that provide evidence of business transactions. Historical, they document it. And as shown here on figure 1.3, your administrative policy and procedures manuals, the things I mentioned, handbooks, org charts, who reports to home, whom is an org chart, tax returns, records, your legal or your contracts. We just came up with a policy at GRCC that says only certain people can sign contracts because you're legally obligating the school to do that. Records management that all falls under. Financial agreements that are legally binding, deeds to property owned, articles of incorporation or bylaws. Historical would be minutes of meetings whenever your department meets. Technically, you want to have minutes of those meetings. 
and a history of them could be short, could be just a few things on it, but you have history of what happened five years ago at a meeting, you can go back and find that discussion that you had about that product, and here's the reason we made that side. We discussed it at the department meeting back in September of 2003, and it was decided that this was the best design to go with. That one had a flaw, this one had a concern, and this is why we ended up with what we have. So your minutes, <clears throat> when you take minutes, I keep thinking about bringing that into this class. We might yet. When you take minutes, you should have some sort of detail of what was said. You don't have to report every single sentence, but make sure you get the basis. Okay, the student CFO was looking, CEO or CFO? CFO was looking for board meeting minutes from 1995. Do you have them? Excellent. Well, how are you keeping those right now? Okay. Elect electronically. Board of Trustees here at GRCC, we used to be able to have videotapes of uh, the meetings because their Board of Trustees meetings are televised. So I have a whole VHS meetings and now you can see some of them online uh, electronically. The minutes, the proceedings, the agenda, those are all posted online for things to do. I might bring, maybe I'll do a little extra credit assignment. Ooh, reminder to self. AC minutes. Pardon those of you that are watching the video. By the time you've seen this, it might actually be part of the requirement of the class. <laughs> and it started as extra credit. So what did we do in early records? What's the history of records management? Hi, hi, that word, glyphics, where would you find those? On the rock walls of cages, uh, caves, caves, all those places. Yes, hieroglyphics. Um, what else can you think of? What were they written on? Stones. I remember certain 10 items were written on some stones, and Mel Brooks had 15 and dropped a stone, and it got 10 to 10. <laughs> aging myself sorry about that so the trends in record management are electronic records right how many of you are doing this at your office we hear about it for medical records how many are doing it at your office so you're going to take those board meeting minutes and and digitize them hope so electronic mail we're putting them all in into our mailing into each other here's one note about electronic mail if you're the type of person that has to share files with somebody and you're out of the office um, or you're in the office, I mean, you're on the office network, please share a link to the file instead of a copy of the file because what happens to that file? You or I supposedly have the original, then we emailed it to so-and-so who now thinks they have the original and who mailed it, emailed it back to us for approval and then there's changes and all that and we no longer have the original. We're not really certain who has the original, but way too many people have a copy of the file unnecessarily. And my IT guy would tell me, um, somewhere else I was working that it would clog up the mail system. The mail system can only hold so much. How many of you ever had a message, your inbox, your mailbox is getting full? Yes. There are limits on how much space those can hold. Same thing with sending them out emails. There's a limit to how many megabytes, gigabytes, whatever it is. I think it's megs. Used to be megs. That you could actually receive in an em email or send out. Be careful of that you're clogging up other people's inboxes. If they don't get this video that you sent them, well, maybe it was too large for them to get through. Document imaging, that's how we're going to get our papers into electronics. We're going to scan them. Internet and e-commerce, electronic file transfer, data exchange, love it. Enterprise content management, what's that? Enterprise content. Anybody know what that is? Page 14. There you go. Term used to describe the technologies, the tools, and methods used to do this capturing, managing, storing, preserving, and delivering. For example, do we have an example?
could be a database. I once worked somewhere they had a database of all the records they had in their files and if somebody checked it out you marked it on the database. They brought it back, you marked it in the database. And then I went to work for um, a hospital and boy did they have quite the um, system for checking in files and checking out files and it was under your name until it got logged back in and put back in this barcode on the files. Mm -hmm. All sorts of stuff. Enterprise content management. Legal considerations. We want to protect your right to privacy. We also want to regulate access to the information by the public. The records managers, they're the ones in charge of implementing the laws and regulations and handling compliance issues. So those of you that are looking for management, this will be more where your concerns will be and we will be discussing more, as I said, theories of records management and uh, this kind of process, implementing, regulating through chapters 5 through 12. The function, planning, organizing, controlling, leading, same as functions as every management position, just focused on records, manage, records themselves. So here's what we're looking at. How long do you keep information? If you create a receipt or record, you figure out who gets it, you use it, then you maintain it, store it, file it, retrieve it, whatever you need to do, and dispose of it. Disposal is where we need to work on it in some of our personal lives, right? But then there's something else will be created in its place. And it's, it's a cycle that goes on and on and over and over. There are programs for managing records. They usually have well-defined goals, efficient procedures, simple, sound organizational plan, and a well-trained staff. So if you're going to go into records management, put together programs, here's what you want to have. Well-defined goals, efficient procedures for managing each stage of a record life cycle, simple, sound, organizational plan, and well-trained staff. Problems you're going to find is management, we don't have a plan. You walk into a startup company, you are now the business administrator for a startup company, you are it. My brother and I laugh because he's a pack rat. And ha well, I don't call us pack rats. We're frustrated perfectionists. That's my issue with filing. I would really like to have a perfect set of files. And the minute you put it in the file, in the order, and in the drawers, 30 seconds later it's no longer perfect because you're going to add a folder in the middle out of order. Not out of in order, but your tabs across the top aren't going to be in this beautiful, gorgeous order anymore. So I keep waiting to have the perfect file system. Just file the darn things. He's in charge of this stuff at the company he works for. Managing all of this, documenting the records. Hopefully that's going to rub off in his personal life too. Um, so if you don't have standards for evaluating your workers in a whole management program, again, this is central to every management position. Organizing plans and evaluating. Human problems. Lack of concern about the importance of records. How many of you have someone in your life that says, I don't need that? What do I need that for? That's one thing about my husband and I. For years, we have been poor managers of financial transactions, but at the end of the year, we have almost every single receipt for the entire year. So when we go to manage it, it's still all there. It's not lack of concern. It's other stuff. Hoarding of records. Ever work with someone? They have it all in their office. You need a file, go talk to so-and-so, they probably got it, they've got everything. I would encourage you that there's other issues going on in your life that, um, issues of security, maybe, kind of, just questions to ask yourself, I don't know. I know what I'm like when I'm hoarding. And I try to talk myself out of it, there'll be another piece of paper tomorrow. I can get this information back. So-and-so originated this, they should have an original copy. And we mentioned earlier at the front of class, ignorance is bliss. Well, that's great until I find out so-and-so didn't keep a copy. <laughs> okay. Poorly trained workers. Don't know where things go. Don't know the difference between some things. Insufficient filing procedures. If your drawers and folders and records are all labeled poorly and then you're moved from files. Poor use of the equipment. If it's laid out, drawers are half empty overstocked, efficient, inefficient use of space, 
excessive records management costs. We're going to hear some things from field trips we're going on about the costs some companies are paying to store records. Really wonder about. And I do know ARMA International is our professional organization. There will be extra credit. I'm trying to get their schedule for this semester. Uh, there will be extra credit opportunities for anyone who wants to go to a meeting of theirs and find out more about what they're like. And that, oh, we have the HIIM and the HIMA. Those are all explained in your book. Uh, ARMA is the one that we have around here mostly. That is the end of Chapter 1. Hopefully this helped you solidify the concepts. Wait, I wanted that.